The Farsight Institute, known for its unorthodox approaches and theories, has brought to the forefront an idea that has captivated many and left others skeptical. It is an idea that pertains not only to our existence, but to the very nature of life and death. An examination of these theories involves delving into the unknown, even venturing into the realms of the supernatural and the mystical. Courtney Brown, the director of the Farsight Institute, was on the Troubled Minds podcast last night for a full three-hour conversation. Do check it out. The notion that Earth is a prison planet where individuals are born without any memory of their past lives is both chilling and perplexing. It suggests a cycle of control and manipulation that reaches far beyond our understanding, a cruel process that erases memories after death Trapping souls in an endless cycle of reincarnation is akin to a cosmic game with rules that are concealed from us. Could it be that entities unknown to us are governing this cycle, keeping us bound to a physical existence that is but a mere illusion? Or perhaps the manipulation of the mind extends to a higher form of technology that we are yet to discover. The concept of Earth as a prison challenges our understanding of freedom destiny and the very essence of our existence called um the, the death traps these are projects that you can find on farsightprime.com the death traps as well as the escape so basically what happens is when somebody dies you see the light you've all heard yeah. that you see the light in your death experience you all see the light that's part of a trap it's a death trap the, everybody there's a there's a light you see we don't call things souls or spirits or anything like that. We call these things isbies. We are all isbies, someone who is for the purpose of being. That's it. And we have also found that it is impossible, totally impossible, nowhere in the universe can they destroy or kill an isby. So it is not possible for you, Michael, or me, or anybody in your chat room or anything like that to die. It is not possible. And religions have all been contrived by these negative extraterrestrials that have been using it to manipulate the public. For example, I, I could talk about the ancient religions starting up with extraterrestrial involvement. A lot of them started up with good intentions, but then they got distorted by the negative ETs. For example, let's pick, uh, I could go into Vedic society, Hinduism, I could go into Buddhism, but let's pick Christianity. So the basic idea of, of Christianity when it started out was... Uh, Jesus was a decent guy, and he wanted to basically say, hey, love is a thing that drives the universe, and chill out, relax, and forgive and forget, and be okay. And that got distorted because they wanted originally for that those ideas to sort of percolate through the society for hundreds of years and eventually change it, because it was a Greek and Roman society back in those days that was a slave society. The whole planet was a slave-based society, and they were hoping that those ideas spread you know, over some hundreds of years, which sort of changed the way people thought. It didn't work. The controlling ETs were still there, and they could perverted it. And it came out in the in the in the Holy Roman Catholic Church, where and, and then and the other religions that followed. That if you sin, you have to first get on your knees and beg for forgiveness. Get on your knees. Get you into that. And then they said, and if you sin, and if you don't beg for forgiveness, you are going to be banished to hellfire forever. And then, but if you beg for forgiveness, you can be granted eternal life. Now, Michael, just think of this. If you're going to be banned for hell forever, that's eternal life, right? And then, and then you're it saying, is. but if you beg for forgiveness, you can be given eternal life. What do you mean you get eternal life each way you go? So it's, it was just a story. It was a concoction that they came up with. The, the point is you can never kill an Isby. However, you can trap it. You can control it by confusing it. And what the death traps are, when you see the light, when you die, you get attracted to it. And it's like a moth getting caught up in a sticky web. The more you fight against it, the more you get caught up in it and you can't get out. And then when you get drawn into it, you get it essentially electrocuted you get a, you get exposed to an extremely high level of voltage it's way more than a lightning bolt like a zillion size more than a lightning bolt and what it does is it rattles the isby and the isby gets loses all memory and loses the basic functionality that all people in the universe have all people in the galaxy have which is telepathy and remote perception you sort of lose all that because it's an electroshock treatment and then it's all controlled by ai and then somebody comes out and says, young master, uh, we have just 
debated your, your situation with the council of elders. And we think you should go back. There's a few more lessons in life that we think you should learn. What do you say? Uh, the difficulty you're having with your spouse. Oh, and you never really resolved the issues with your grandmother. Oh, and the fight you had with your father. We think you should go back and just resolve a few more of those things. You've totally lost all memory. You've lost remote viewing and telepathy perception. And you're confronted with this wonderful feeling of the council of elders that want the best for you, suggesting that you go back. It's up to you, though. Totally up to you. But then, of course, everybody then says, you're right. I have a few wrinkles I need to work out. And so you get recycled back again. So it's a, recycle, it's a recycling system that goes back. And it, what it does is it keeps everybody here. It's very difficult to get out once you're here. The Farsight Institute's use of remote viewing to uncover truths adds another layer to this complex idea. Remote viewing is a method that claims to allow individuals to perceive and describe distant or unseen targets through extrasensory perception or other spiritual means. This technique, although criticized by some, has been employed by the Institute to shed light on the barbaric method used to erase memories after death. The idea that one's memories can be erased, manipulated, or controlled resonates with themes of control and power that exist in many ancient traditions and mystical practices. It opens the door to possibilities of escape from this prison, a pathway towards understanding the very nature of our being. The project focuses on two different death experiences, one where the soul is inhibited or affected by external factors, and another where the soul is totally released and not inhibited in any way. And these ideas offer a glimpse into the diverse nature of death itself. The first experience implies a form of entrapment, perhaps by those very entities that govern the cycle of reincarnation. It resonates with the notion that there may be forces beyond our control that dictate our spiritual journey. The second experience, on the other hand, offers a glimmer of hope, a release from the chains that bind us. This complete liberation of the soul hints at the possibility that the cycle can be broken, that there is a path to true enlightenment and understanding. All of this takes on another wrinkle when we consider the notion of near-death experiences. The phenomenon of going into the light, often reported in near-death experiences and out-of-body experiences, adds another dimension to the ideas presented by the Farsight Institute. This concept has captivated the human imagination, transcending the boundaries of science and spirituality, and even entering the realm of popular culture. In NDEs and OBEs, individuals often describe a profound experience of being drawn towards a bright light, a sensation of warmth, peace, and an overwhelming feeling of love. Many interpret this light as a gateway to the afterlife or a higher realm of consciousness. However, there's a contrasting perspective that resonates with the idea of Earth as a prison planet. Could this light be a trap, a lure that keeps us bound to the cycle of reincarnation? This notion is reminiscent of the famous line from the film Poltergeist, where the character Carol Ann is warned to stay away from the light. In Poltergeist, the light is portrayed as a deceptive force, a danger hidden behind a facade of beauty and serenity. It's a chilling metaphor that echoes the theories of the Farsight Institute, where the light might be part of the barbaric method used to erase memories after death. The juxtaposition of these interpretations forces us to question the nature of the light itself. Is it a gateway to liberation, or is it a siren's call leading us back into captivity? This dichotomy is a reflection of the broader human condition, where the pursuit of truth is often fraught with ambiguity, contradiction, and mystery. The light, in all its glory and terror, becomes a symbol of our quest for understanding, our longing for something beyond this physical existence, and our vulnerability to forces that may be beyond our comprehension. Whether one sees it as a pathway to enlightenment or a trap that ensnares the soul, the concept of going into the light challenges us to look beyond the surface, to question our beliefs, and to recognize that the answers we seek may be more complex and elusive than we ever imagined. These ideas from the Farsight Institute are undoubtedly provocative and challenging. They force us to reconsider our beliefs about life, death, and the universe itself. While these series may appear outlandish to some, they resonate with ancient wisdom and spiritual teachings that have existed throughout history. Whether they are truth or fiction, they serve as a reminder that our understanding of reality is still in its infancy, and the mysteries of existence are far from being unraveled. If you like these videos, don't forget to sub up to Trouble Minds TV, leave a comment and a thumbs up, 
and we'll see you guys in the next one.